Waking up was was tough because I didn't want to face a day. You remember when the actor Deepika came out and spoke about how she was feeling all of this? That was in fact a turning point for many who have been suffering silently. For me the minute I understood the term depression it just made it so much easier to to deal with. Untreated depression can lead to one feeling suicidal. But how do you identify a state of clinical depression and hence the call to action for medical intervention? So depression is when you have the symptoms that I'm now going to narrate. Sadness of mood, loss of interest, loss of pleasure, having some body symptoms like sleep, which could be more or less, appetite that could be affected you feel that your concentration is not there and you experience hopelessness helplessness worthlessness and they can experience feelings that life is not worth it and thoughts that i want to end my life so if you have these symptoms coming together for about two odd weeks that's what depression is 300 million people around the world are depressed Untreated or partially treated depression can someday lead to suicide. Suicide is the eighth highest killer in the globe. Yet, mental health continues to be ignored. Suicide is a lot of times misunderstood by people because what they see is person A attempted suicide. What was happening at that day or around that time. Was it a relationship issue? Was it a job issue? Was it something else? Was there a trigger? What we don't realize is that these triggers happen throughout our life every now and then in any case. This was a factor which was just around that episode or that attempt. Go further back. Which are the distal factors which matter? These are the factors which make this, made this person uh, vulnerable. Uh, when I started looking uh, these methods up, um, I actually, um, like, uh, I, I was thinking very logically, for example, what is the safest way to end your life, in a sense, that doesn't cause much pain and that just, you know, uh, does the job. This cagey, clandestine attitude towards mental health issues, menstrual issues that lead to feeling suicidal, or even judging someone who's facing it, must stop. Thankfully, in today's day and age, it is positive dialogue that is making all the difference. After I wrote uh, about it, then a lot of women, hundreds of women reached out to me. And both menstruation and suicide and depression, they are all connected with shame and guilt and taboo. Uh, but once you start talking about it and then thousand other women come up and say, oh, well, I also feel the same way, then it becomes a social issue. A serious lack of support groups for these silent sufferers calls for action. Mental health care practitioners have made a compelling argument for a national suicide prevention policy after the attempt to commit suicide was decriminalized in India. Why has it been decriminalized? Because we recognize that you did this because you were st struggling. You were the victim of an illness. And it's not your fault. A criminal act has to be your fault. I think broadly, things that I'd like to see is uh, a consistent effort by the government sector, by the NGO sector, by healthcare, be it private or government sector and media, education institutes, resident welfare associations. At various levels, a consistent approach of continuously talking about mental health. That narrative cannot be restricted to World Mental Health Day or a Suicide Prevention Day. That needs to be in continuity.